Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic, coping well, and today we've got some more box office numbers to break down. Yes, the box office is coming in quite slowly, and it's still not quite caught up yet with the different industry sites where uh, releasing numbers on Sunday, etc. And it makes a lot of sense. A lot of theaters around the world are still closed, and even the ones that are open are very limited in their overall capacity. But there are still numbers coming in nonetheless, and Tenet is still continuing to do kind of well, depending on how you look at it. It is now past $250 million worldwide, which is roughly $50 million more than the last time I covered this movie. And even this is still somewhat, I think, moving in the right direction. It made, again, obviously, it rather cost $200 million or so to make, which means it costs around $300 million to actually uh, produce and market the movie altogether. It does not get 100% of the $250 million it's made worldwide. And in fact, in certain countries where it's made a huge portion of its money, it will actually get less than the typical 60-40 split that you would see here in uh, the actual United States. And so with that being said, the film very much still has a long way to go to make its money back. But as I said previously, Obviously, there's still a lot of states here in the U.S. that have not fully opened yet. Many places, of course, where this film has not actually gotten a full release yet. And also other countries as well where the release has been rather limited. So I still think there's a chance for this movie to be able to make some of its money back. That being said, if the film does technically lose money, at least when it looks at the box office side of it, that would not surprise me. But the film still obviously will make some more money when it comes to Blu-ray, DVD sale, digital sales as well. And so overall, I would say the film is doing well for the concern, you know, for the considerations and well for what's going on right now, but definitely still has a way to go. All the while, Mulan's uphill battle continues in China. And yes, it dropped a huge percentage in China um, and we'll get to that in just a second. But before I get into the numbers, please make sure you smash the like button and hit that subscribe if you have not done so already. It really does help out a lot. And let's go ahead and dive into some of the numbers. So this, of course, is being reported by Deadline. Christopher Nolan's tenant handily passed $200 million overseas this weekend with $25 million offshore frame to bring the international box office to $214 million, including domestic. The global uh, the global to date total is now $250 million. So it's still not making a whole lot here domestically, which is not that surprising. Again, it's a movie that is coming out during pandemic. It is a movie coming out when so many people would rather do other things than go to a movie. And it's coming out during a time in which many people are still afraid to go back to the theater because obviously there's a lot of information out there and it's scaring a lot of people from going back. And with the limited number of seats, with the limited number of, of, of show times, it's all having an impact on the overall numbers and scores. And so it's going to be a while for theaters to be able to catch up with everything. And there's a chance that it might not ever fully recover uh, because if it doesn't start making money soon, we could potentially see a lot of theaters begin to close and then the numbers are going to drop potentially even more so. But it's making money overseas, and I would say that is at least better than making nothing. Boosted play overseas, as we noted yesterday, was the Japan bow, which came in with a strong 4.3 million in the number one position and ahead of both Dunkirk and Interstellar. The latter recently played strongly in a local re-release across a three day view, which is pretty cool. The fact that Dunkirk and Interstellar coming out in, in Japan are still doing very well, even years after their initial release is pretty damn cool. Interstellar is a film I would love to see back on the big screen again because it's a movie I didn't like. You know, I, li I, I loved it all the way up until the time when he ejects out of the ship. And then I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on at this point. And then I saw it a second time and I said, well, at least I'm ready for this. And you know what? I think it makes a little bit more sense. And the narrative for there, you know, narrative there is pretty cool. Dunkirk. I'm not really a big fan of it. Again, if you're a fan of if you're a fan of uh, World War II films, or rather, uh, you know, films about war specifically, and uh, you know, following the soldiers and their stories, etc. I think that you might find some interest in it, but it just didn't have any characters for me that were worth talking about. Obviously, Tenet has a lot of issues with the story. Some people are confused by it. Obviously, the sound mixing has been very rough for the point where people just don't understand what's going on. But it's still a film that I think is worthy of being seen at this point. Uh, during three day a three day Japan launch rather than the typical Saturday Sunday. IMAX tenant screen sold 27% of the market share. So doing very well in the uh, international uh, IMAX marketplace overall. In Mexico, with 88% of the cinemas reopened, the clear winner was Tenet with $850,000, which, again, for Mexican market is not great. It's not completely terrible either. 
Uh, again, with 88% of the cinemas being open, it's still pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, 14% drop in France, 25% in Germany, Italy, 24%, etc. So still pretty strong holds overall for, all for a movie that's been out now for, for several weeks. And so, again, the film is still definitely still making money. Uh, again, when you compare the fact that it's made $50 million or so in about a week's span, you know, it's probably going to end up around 300 to $350 million by the end of its run. If I had to make a guess at this point, could be more, could be less. But based on the current trends of what's going and the fact that many places still have yet to open, it seems that that would be most likely the case. Now let's go ahead and move on to Disney's Mulan. Yes, that's right. Disney's Mulan, the film that's caused so much controversy because... At the end of their movie, they shouted out a group closely associated with the concentration camps that they have in China because, don't forget, China has concentration camps and there's essentially a modern-day genocide going on in that country. But for some reason, we don't talk about it and we can't talk about it and we can't call out Disney for it, apparently, either. But you know what? I'm going to continue to do so because... It is freaking ridiculous, not to mention the movie sucks. Uh, so it says here, meanwhile, meanwhile, Disney's Mulan saw a 72% drop in its sophomore China frame. So in its second weekend, it had a 72% drop in China, meaning it added $6.5 million to the local cum of $36.2 million. Again, remember, they put all of their eggs in the China basket, and they've only made $36.2 million, and the chance of them dropping off even more next weekend is also incredibly high. And it means that this film probably won't get much further past, what, 45, maybe max $50 million. And seeing that, they put most of their money, most of their backing trying to get it to be a huge hit in China, and it's not selling. Again, you can continue to try and spin it being because of COVID and all this other stuff. But let's be honest here. COVID is just one of the many reasons why this film is not doing well. Many of which the things have to do with the fact that the movie's just not very good. No one's really asking for it. And of course, you've got a lead there that's been very, you know, very supportive of the communist regime. And the fact that the film itself shouts out that said communist regime. And of course... Again, concentration camps. Let's not forget that point. The live action update on the 1998 animated classic was number two for the weekend there, where it has been battling piracy. And here's where we see, again, piracy, low review scores, and poor word of mouth. Well, why do you think there's been low reviews? That's right, because the movie's terrible. Poor word of mouth. Again, why do you think that's the case? Because it's terrible, and of course, because of the political controversy. And as far as piracy goes, every film deals with piracy. Obviously, Disney made it a lot easier, seeing that they put everything out on Disney+, Plus. yet... It is still one of just the many reasons why this film is not doing well, and to try and spin it any other way would just be disingenuous. And speaking of spin, let's go ahead and talk about the Yahoo Finance article that everyone's been talking about, and a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about as well. According to a group, a research firm called Seven Park Data, again, personally, I don't know much about them, it says that nearly 29% of U.S. Disney Plus users that access the app between September 1st to September 12th purchased the $30 Mulan film far surpassing the other popular and free titles on the platform. That makes sense. It's a brand new movie. It's a movie that you've been heavily marketing, and so it makes sense that it would be doing better than even your free titles on there. Don't know why these many people would be actually spending $30 on it, but that is, of course, for another day. During the company's latest earnings report, Disney said that the streaming platform had amassed over 60 million global subscribers, assuming, and here is where it goes to twisting and spinning the narrative, assuming that U.S. households make up 50% of the total base, Disney has not yet broken out the exact number of U.S.-based subscribers. Seven Parks data suggests that at best, roughly 9 million users purchased the Mulan film for $30 a pop, 29% of our estimated 30 million users. Under that top scenario, net profits would pile up to $261 million for U.S. markets alone. Now, the reason why I have issues with these numbers is because of the fact that, one, it's using data from a research firm that I've never heard of. Now, does that mean that they're not legitimate? I'm not going to say that one way or the other, but the fact that their access or their data is 29% of U.S. Disney Plus users, and they don't still have the ability to release that information. See, here's what's crazy. How is it that a research firm can tell us the percentage of users from the United States, but they cannot tell us how many users we're talking about? It would seem to me pertinent and necessary for them to be able to have that information available so they could give an actual accurate number. So basically, it seems that they're just taking guesses here. So it kind of brings into question even that 29% number there, seeing that they, again, how do they know 29% of anything if they don't have the actual number of users in the first place? So that alone is a guesstimate. And then you go on to understand that, oh, we know that 60 million global subscribers there are, and then 
Yahoo essentially tries to twist it saying, well, assuming these things, assuming these things to be true, assuming, 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 and therefore it just does not really seem to be accurate to suggest that this is indeed an accurate number. Uh, again, if it is true or if it's even close to being true, yeah, that's a crap ton of money. $260 million is going to be enough for them to be able to make up most of what they invested in the movie. Remember that that film also costs around $200 million, which means $300 million total with marketing and maybe even a little more with more marketing since it got delayed. But that would mean it would only need to make essentially what it's made so far overseas to get close to breaking even. Now, it does not get 100% of what it's been making overseas yet. It would still be possibly enough to get them to that point. Now, remember, this is their best case scenario, right? This is what they said at best, roughly 9 million users purchased Mulan for $30. Again, because this is all based on assumptions, because the firm themselves that released this percentage does not even release the actual number of subscribers, it really does raise a, lot of, a lot, raise a lot of questions as to where they got this number, where they got this data from in the first place. And to be honest, I don't think Disney would have been hiding the fact that they've made this much money if this was indeed true. If this was a massive hit, they would have released this immediately. They would have said, boom, everyone's watching it. The number one movie in America. They would have been saying this and this and this and this, and they would have been backing up with numbers, but they haven't been doing that. All they've been able to say is, oh, it's the one trending right now on Disney Plus, or oh, it's the most watched film on Disney Plus over a week span, which does not tell us anything about actual numbers. So here's what I'll wait for I'll wait for Disney to actually have a release or for them to have to make a financial um, uh, release, you know, releasing, releasing of information to government officials of how many users they actually have, of how much money they're making, so that we can then from that determine how much or how many subscribers they actually have. And once we have that number, then we can figure out how many of them actually watch this movie overall. But again, I'm not going to be using Seven Park data, seeing that they gave us 29% of U.S. users, but not an actual total of how many users that is. Seems a little bit fishy and sketchy to me, so that's why I've not been running with that story at all, and instead just looking at the raw box office numbers that have actually been released by the studios themselves. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Do you think that Tenet will make its money back? Maybe not in theaters, but maybe potentially on Blu-ray or you know DVD and 4K. And do you believe this story with Disney? Again, I really just honestly have a lot of questions about this specific source in general. Again, Seven Park Data. Uh, again, when it comes to research firms, usually they're names that we don't have a whole lot of information on. But seeing that that link itself does not bring us to the actual study, it again, makes me start to question about the validity of it. And remember also, Yahoo is not really known for providing you know great, insightful news pieces and hard-hitting data and hard-hitting research. Just not really come across to me as a valid source and a valid piece of information. I could be wrong on this, but just based on common sense stuff right here, just seems to raise more questions. But let me know your thoughts about this and anything I mentioned in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, helps me out a lot. You are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now a huge shout out to all of my September Patreon and Subscribe Star members, Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P., David Bobrizic, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Father Damien Cook, Frank the Tank and the Shawhan Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, The Hunky Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, Intertrap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Kenneth Camille, Lady T, Laura the Modern Major General Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Outpost Dyer, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B. Thank you very much for being my supporters over on Patreon. And to my subscribe star members, stand for John B., Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and The K Man. Thank you so very much for being my supporters over on Subscribestar, and a shout out to all of my supporters on both platforms. If you or yourself want to get your name shouted out at the end of every single video and live stream, please consider joining on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also get access to exclusive giveaways, to an exclusive podcast that I do twice a month with my friend, John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where we talk about just random stuff going on in the movies, our reviews, and also we take Q&A questions from everyone.
one as well in those categories. So if you would like to have any of those things or access to them or even the biggest of them all to be one of my chosen of Valhalla and get a t-shirt during your first month and also have access to be featured on the channel once a month on the chosen of Valhalla live stream, please consider checking that out in the links in the description below. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.